Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute, realistic looking guinea pig cake. Let's go! Okay, so I have some white modeling chocolate here. You can use whatever modeling chocolate you want. And we're going to start with the feet. Uh, the feet have to dry for at least 24 hours. Um, I left them from the time I made it to the next day. Probably if you leave them out to dry eight hours, it might still work. Um, but just so you know, I personally left it out for 24 hours to dry. And what we're aiming for here is sort of um, of an L shape. You want to be able to have a thin bottom part where you're going to create and make the toes and nails from and sort of like a thicker top where you're going to use that later on to attach it to the actual cake and you want to make sure that your feet are flat to the surface you're working on and we're going to create this sort of like triangle cut so that we can get nice and pointy fingers the guinea pigs have really pointy nails i noticed so it's a lot easier to do the triangle shape to get that pointy ends as opposed to just doing one straight out cut and any adjustments that you want to make to the fingers or toes you need to do now because once it dries it will just snap if you try to adjust it then you need four of these, of course, and you're gonna let them dry as long as you can. And we're gonna later on attach them to our cake. And this is the final shape. Again, doesn't have to be like the prettiest um, feet. They hide most of it, like half of them will be under the body, but you still want to have the overall shape so that your cake can stand nicely on top of them. Okay, sugar eyes. I'm using black isomalt. I just had clear isomalt and dyed it black with food coloring. I also have this mold that I got at Amazon. Um, you can definitely make these with fondant if you wanted to. I just like the, I like the realistic look of the isomalt. It's just sugar. Um, make sure you're wearing gloves, very important. Isomalt is very, very hot and it can burn really really bad and I'm using the second to last size of this mold um, you can let it set for 10 minutes 10 15 minutes about and we're going to use two eyes so let this one dry and make the next one I have here a six inch vanilla cake actually made it um, fruity pebbles flavor but you can use any cake you want just make sure you're using a sturdy recipe and I'm just gonna tort it cut it in half and put some buttercream on it the reason why I say use a sturdy cake with it is because we're gonna prop this onto our chocolate feet so you want to make sure you have a nice dense cake that will hold on to itself without having the feet sink into it. You can easily Google um, recipes online. And I also have some Fruity Pebbles buttercream that I'm just gonna put onto the cake. You could also do any kind of other flavoring. It doesn't have to be vanilla. 
just again make sure that it's a, a nice and sturdy recipe for this project we're just going to use the 1 6 inch this is a small cake um, I would make this cake much bigger just because then you get into needing structure in order for it to prop up also you could make it without propping it up into the feet you can skip altogether the feet part and just create like the little feet and put it to the side that would work just as well and in a minute here we're going to start carving our cake and giving it some shape just cover that sandwich that um, buttercream together and I am going to use a serrated knife for this I just find that it works well for me um, but you can definitely use whatever tools you have or whatever works best for you and I'm gonna try to do an angle cut on both the starting point of the cut and the end point so if you notice I kind of changed the direction of the knife halfway through and I have this sort of like V cut that I'm trying to achieve um, only because I want to be able to round out this into the shape of the guinea pig and so if you notice guinea pigs have very very rounded bodies and this is gonna help me get into a nice head start in order to achieve that I did the same thing on the other side and one, one thing I noticed at this point was I'm needing some height um, because even though the body of the guinea pig is not gonna be that wide or big it does have a little bit of a higher point towards the spine so we're gonna try to mimic that and I just added from the pieces that I cut off the cake I just added one portion of that and of course we want a buttercream in between to have a nice ratio of buttercream to cake and because I want to make sure I have enough cake from a start point I'm also going to add a little strip on the back you're going to see here in a second just a, a small sliver again from one of the pieces that I had cut off don't ever cut into your fingers <laughs> like I did and just add that there we're going to take care of all that browning in a moment again it's just like if you were sculpting anything you want to start with good amount of material in this case our cake to be able to have something to carve off of and continue doing just little by little don't go too crazy cutting too much at a time i think it works best when you just try to do it little by little rounding out any sharp edges that you see right now we're just focusing mostly on the outside of the body and i'm looking at pictures um, i have references up and that's why i'm able to sort of like see what i'm trying to achieve so if you see me taking a pause here and there i'm just looking at my picture making sure that things are making sense in terms of the overall shape to clear up my board just so you guys could see a little better so now that that I got the overall shape on the sides of the cake I want to go ahead and round out the top part of it so I created a divot in what seems to be halfway point on the top of the cake 
that's going to give me a slight point of reference uh, for what is the head of the guinea pig and the body of the, of the guinea pig. Um, at the same time, I want to round out the bottom part of the uh, guinea pig, and by that I mean the booty um, and the front of the face as well. So with the front of the face, it gets interesting because I want to be able to cut on a an angle so that I can get some sort of height that differentiates between the overall body of the guinea pig. And again, because it's such a small cake, we are able to get away with it without having any cake falling off or um, just not staying all together. Just making sure that I'm rounding all that out. I also took a little piece of the bottom sides um, because I wanted to help give it the illusion that it was off of the um, the board where it eventually will end up being displayed. So that helps in creating that illusion and helping the cake being propped up. Imagine if I just leave it straight like that and then go ahead and put it on top of the feet and display it. It's just gonna look squarish um, on the bottom. So you wanna make sure you're giving it, again, an all round um, shape. And at this point, I picked up the cake and I went a little bit off camera, sorry about that. But what I'm doing is just creating that cut on an angle on both sides of the bottom of the cake. So that when, again, I prop it down or I put it down and prop it on the feet, it will look as if it was indeed not touching the board. Just a little bit of extra help that allows the eye to see it and be like oh my god that looks like it's gonna walk any moment in here you can see that angle cut that i had mentioned the front of the face i want it to sort of like be highlighted and on the pictures i also can see there's a little bit of elevation from the tip of the nose and it goes on an angle downward and then his body continues so I just want to be able to mimic that and I'm perfectly able to do that cut and also keeping it rounded out so after you cut make sure that any sharp edges that you may have are also rounded out And this is how it looks after carving all around, creating my nicely shaped curves. And um, I did go back and try to create a little bit of more definition and differentiation from the head portion of the guinea pig and the body. So you're gonna see that centered cut being a little bit more defined. I'm going now to cover my cake with um, some chocolate ganache. You can use white chocolate, any flavoring really. Um, you could even use buttercream. Just make sure if you use buttercream that you chill your cake before you move on onto covering it with the modeling chocolate, just so you don't have a lot of buttercream moving around on you. And I wanna make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna cover any potential holes that I may have from the cake or the buttercream and I want it to be nice and smooth. I want to preserve all that roundness that I got from carving and keeping the ganache nice and thin and applying it that same way, it's gonna help with that.
I have one of this, you could use an acetate um, sheet, um, just uh, like a scraper, a uh, smooth one, and just go all over your cake and making sure you don't have any hard lumps or hard edges. And that also will help you with the overall final look of the cake right before we go ahead and cover it with our modeling chocolate. ahead and put some ganache on the bottom of my cake and now that the top is dry I can hold on to my cake no problem and I'm just gonna cover that bottom part that didn't have ganache before because I'm going to cover the entirety of the cake in modeling chocolate and you can just cover it again very thin layer of ganache and you can set it to its side to dry. If you want to speed up the process, you could probably put the cake in the refrigerator for a couple of minutes. It doesn't take too long. And that's gonna help it set up um, and we can move on to our next step. Okay, so now I have more of that white modeling chocolate. I just wanted to show you this process because it's important to start with a well needed modeling chocolate in order to be successful in the application you don't want to work with a modeling chocolate that's too cold too hard because when you go to apply it it's going to be hard to manage it it's going to create potential creases that are going to be extra work for you to have to disguise or eventually have to um, work into the chocolate itself which is doable and it's one of the reasons why i like working with modeling chocolate better than fondant but in order to avoid extra work later on i want to make sure that i'm working quickly i'm kneading my chocolate to a point where it's nice and stretchy but not melty and that when i put it into the cake that's potentially cold mine was that I'm also working quickly but it's it's a nice transition so I just stretched it out long enough and big enough for my cake to be covered again it's not a big cake so it should be easy to do now that I have my modeling chocolate nice and stretched out I am going to cover my cake I did cover my board I wanted to make sure I didn't get any ganache on it but I'm going to take that off later on but you just want to cover the cake and gently start pulling just a little bit at a time on each section just to avoid as many creases as you can you're gonna end up with a few of them just because it's an irregular shape a guinea pig but overall just slowly make sure the modeling chocolate is nice and tight against the cake that ganache is nice and dry so you shouldn't have any issues with things moving around and I just continued putting kind of light pressure onto the modeling chocolate so that it would stick and then you can get rid of the excess and I am going to take the cake flip it over onto my hand and take that modeling chocolate and start folding it in so that I can close it out completely and any excess that you have you can definitely cut that off I have some food scissors that I just grabbed and nipped off anything that would be extra and again remember you can always reuse your chocolate 
if you happen to get some buttercream or ganache onto it it will probably not work as good um, so just make sure to keep it nice and clean so that you can reuse that modeling chocolate so you can see i'm just trimming off any excess modeling chocolate that i have and i just want to end up with a nice flat cohesive coverage for the cake so i take a modeling tool and i just try to work any seams that i have or any bumps or lumps that i may have with the chocolate and bring it into a close to make sure that my guinea pig is nice and covered with the modeling chocolate Now that the body is covered, I'm just going back and trying to define the portion of the middle of the body where I had made a little indentation when we were carving so that I can make sure that my modeling chocolate is really following suit with that shape. And any edges or wrinkles that I that I may have I'm just smoothing those out you can use the palm of your hand to smooth the modeling chocolate that works really well or you can use the tool any tools that you have for um, smoothing those edges you just want to make sure that it looks nice and smooth you don't have to go too too crazy I just went back and kind of cleaned off any lines that didn't make sense because soon we are going to texture our cake it's a guinea pig so we are trying to mimic the hair so essentially what i was just trying to do is smooth out any lines that didn't make sense if they were going like from the top to the bottom i probably was trying to clear them out because our hairs are gonna go on a specific pattern that's what's gonna help us give it that extra realistic look having a cohesive hair flow um, on that we're going to create onto our model and chocolate so we can start detailing our face now i was trying to define even further the face giving a little bit of height in, in in the middle region where sort of like a plane creates where the nose it's from the bottom and it goes upward onto what would be the top of the head so creating sort of like a triangle shape going downward from 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 the head down and sort of create like an imaginary line of what would be the center of the face and that will give you a nice reference point to start with the nose and the nose for this particular look i just created an open mouth so i made sure i used my dressing tool created an opening and then the other end of my tool has this nicely curved pointy uh stick and i'm able to use that to create the lines right in the center that will go along with creating the nose for our guinea pig and you're gonna notice once i place the eyes um the this, that same plane that we created sort of like a cone triangle shape from the head downward will be the base for our eyes the eyes of the guinea pig are very interesting there are no lids at least on the picture that i saw and you want to make sure when you apply the eyes whether it's with the isomalt or with the fondant that they don't look like he's looking straight meaning you don't want to place the eyes just downward you want to place the eyes on that following that same plane where the eye is kind of like flat and flush with the face 
and you're gonna be able to see more once I place the eyes. I'm just gonna take a, a round point tool um, and create an opening for the eye. And um, again, because there are no lids, nothing special, I have to do nothing else extra. Just make sure your opening is big enough for the eye. If you go a little too far out and creating too big of a hole, you can always bring the model and chuckle it back around. Make sure you have a nice round coverage of the eye without creating sort of like unevenness it is a nice perfect circle around the eye While defining my face, I realized that the bottom part of my face was missing a little bit of chunkiness. What I mean by that is the guinea pigs have very, very um, voluptuous um, cheeks, if you will. So I wanted to make sure that I could capture that on this particular project. So I just took a little bit of modeling chocolate and placed it on either side of the mouth and just slowly and patiently went ahead with one of my tools and worked the chocolate into the rest of the cake so I had no seams and I could just have a cohesive piece um, where I could see and add that extra layer. going to add the cute little ears for this you don't need much they have really really tiny ears i didn't really go by scale i just wanted to give my cake a little bit of a cuter look to give it um nice thin slightly larger than normal ears um you can definitely go by scale and just measure your picture or whatever reference you're using but for mine i'm just gonna flatten some modeling chocolate cut it right in half 
and place those onto my cake and I just want to smooth the ears onto the cake before I put in any details. I want to get the front of the ear and the back of the ear and smooth that chocolate into the rest of the cake so that it looks like it's all one single piece. Onto the details for the hair. I noticed in my picture that the guinea pig has very short hair on the face and it kind of gets longer um, as you go towards the back of the body. So I want to mimic that same thing. So for my strokes, I'm going to go really small in front of the face and on the same direction. So I start on the tip of the nose, going upward, same direction, kind of shifting a little bit on the cheek side and just keeping it nice and short this was probably the part that took the longest but if you want to get that realistic look you should really pay attention to the details don't sink your tool into the modeling chocolate because then what's going to happen when you decide to paint your cake it's just gonna create this sort of like pocket to hold on to a lot of paint and it's just gonna not gonna look good um, at this point, I decided to attach my feet because I want to make sure that I don't go and create the details on the back of the guinea pig and then potentially have them ruined by um, holding on to the cake. So I just grabbed my dried feet and I'm going to take a little bit of modeling chocolate, fresh modeling chocolate, just needed. And I'm, you, I'm going to use that to attach my feet and I am just going to work a tiny piece onto the top of the feed, put it into the cake and just smooth that um, so that again, it looks like it's just part of one piece. Then I continue adding details for the hair, just making sure that the back of the guinea pig has hairs that look a little longer. So the length of my strokes, it's getting longer. And I am just trying to keep that cohesive line and flow of the hair so that it looks like it's a nicely groomed guinea pig. I also am focusing on making sure that the details on my nose are nice and visible, the details on the mouth, making sure the seams on the feet are almost gone and that my piece looks like a one nice cohesive piece because our next step is going to be painting our guinea pig and what we want to make sure our cake doesn't have any weird lines or any weird seams that we don't want them to be visible.
picture I was looking at, the little guy that I was referencing, it does have a little sort of like punk hair look and I thought it looked so cute. So I just want to add an extra piece to my cake where it's going to go in between the ears and a little bit later on I noticed it was a little too crownish looking so I just went ahead and added a little bit more behind the ears just to give it a nice transition and it didn't look like a tiara or a piece of something that wasn't part of the hairs so just working with my tool again making sure it looks hair like and kind of erasing that seam that was created from the new piece of the modeling chocolate and you should be good to go. my little guy I decided to use airbrush you can definitely use a brush and just your colors and alcohol or you could have pre-colored your modeling chocolate and just add pieces to it it's completely up to you the colors are also completely up to you I'm just following my reference and for this cake I decided to go with a brownish orangey look I think that's what's a little bit more common for some of the guinea pigs and also hamsters a little bit more recognizable and i'm just going to color a little bit of black on the top piece of hair that i had added on a little bit later on and i want to make sure that my colors don't mix and match necessarily i want to have a good definition because that's what i see on the picture so just adding color to the feet making sure I have a little bit of all the colors that I'm incorporating on the top on the feet as well and I have used here some pink color some flesh tone which is that color um, that looks kind of orangey and then I went over the flesh tone with a little bit more brown because I wanted to deepen that color definitely don't go too overboard with the airbrush it could beat up on you if you use too much or if you get too close to the modeling chocolate because modeling chocolate has fat in it and so it will allow you to paint on it but just you just have to be careful so if you end up building up your colors make sure you let one layer dry completely before moving on to adding more color
And there you have it guys, a realistic looking guinea pig cake standing on his own feet. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to see more of these tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. See you soon.